Chappie is a movie that's hard to define. It was directed by Neil Blomkamp of District 9 fame. The graphics are amazing, and the plot introduces a lot of interesting ideas. The ethics of a mechanized police force, the transferability of human consciousness, and sentient AI. But with reviews like this, it must have made a few missteps. So Photon and I are here to break this movie down. Um, can I be excused? This movie's scary. No way, Photon. We gotta hear your perspective as a fellow sentient AI. In this episode, we'll be looking at the hidden themes of Chappie. Chappie is set in modern-day South Africa, where nerdy computer programmer Dion lives alone with his robot creations. Hey, he's got a cute robot butler, too! Dion's claim to fame is that he designed an autonomous robot police force. These robot cops look awesome on the job. Big brother, teach me how to be cool like you! Tetraval, the company behind the police scouts, is raking in big bucks, and CEO Sigourney Weaver shares the good news. The police chief just called me to place an order for another 100 scouts. This is very, very good news. Man, did you really have to tell them that it's good news? That was the cheesiest corporate victory lap since Birdemic. Uh oh, a Birdemic comparison this early? This can't be good. Dion is man of the hour for his successful scouts, but he ultimately has loftier ambitions for his robot creations. What really interests me is, is high-level AI. True intelligence, uh, a machine that can think and feel. He's just like you, Dr. M. He doesn't have any friends, so he's creating one of his own. I have friends, I just prefer the company of robots. It's funny how they try to make this an action scene when he's probably just looking for a missing semicolon. Sweet subroutines! Dion's finally cracks the code. He's created an AI that can think and feel like a human being. All he needs is a robot body to test it out. Hey, perfect timing! Police Scout Unit 22 just took an RPG to the chest and is labeled for demolition. Dion asks if he can use the scrap body to test out his new program. Do you realize you just came to the CEO of a publicly traded weapons corporation and pitched a robot that can write poems? Good point, Sigourney. Kind of obvious in hindsight, but can I pretty please do it anyway? No, no, I'm sorry, Dion. You know how insurance works for those. Dion is discouraged, but thanks to his inspirational cat poster, he decides to steal the damaged robot anyway. Would a skinny human really be strong enough to carry all those heavy robot parts like that? No, Photon, no, he would not. Meanwhile, a gang of criminals has bungled a job for a crime boss named Khal Drogo. I mean, Hippo. They gotta produce 20 million rand in a week, or they're toast. And within the first 10 minutes of the movie, they've already killed the only black character with a name. Wait, did he even get a name? Look, I'm not saying every movie needs a diverse cast, but considering that Chappie is set in Africa, in a city where black people outnumber white 6 to 1, it's kind of a strange choice. At least the Indian guy's actually Indian. Unlike in Short Circuit. Well, the cat is dragged in a sight for four eyes, that is for sure. The gang needs to pull off the perfect heist, but they can't as long as the robot police are around. So they kidnap the robot's inventor to make him shut them off. Instead, they discover Unit 22 in the back of his van. What if we get him to program this bad boy to fight for us? You can indestruct the robot gangster number one, son. But before that, Dion cautions them the robot will have some learning to do. But it's like a, a, a child in the beginning, like a, like a human baby, but smarter. This AI is capable of learning much faster than any organic intelligence, but it would have to be taught. All right, fine. Let's fire this bad boy up. Whoa, 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 whoa. Come, no one's gonna hurt you. See? That's it. Come. He first reacts with fear, which doesn't really make sense. But remember, Dion said the robot had to learn everything from scratch like a baby. But babies only have two instinctive fears, loud noises and falling. Everything else is learned. So shouldn't Chappie be innately trusting? His initial programming could include threat detection. It would make sense, since the police scouts probably have it. But he acts scared before any threat is presented. In any case, it certainly does show off how expressive those bunny ear antennas are, and it visually shows off how different he is now from when he used to be a fearless cop. 
Dion teaches the robot his first words, using obsolete objects most of us never use in daily life. Wait a minute, when Dion was compiling the code for this AI, it included items like speech and knowledge, so shouldn't this robot start with at least a basic vocabulary? The robot police scouts come fully loaded to understand human phrases and respond to them. Why can't Unit 22? Exactly. I mean, Chappie could just download a language pack from online. He'd still need to learn nuance and context, but he should be able to say a few sentences from the moment he switched on. But I do like Yolandi. She's always nice to Chappie right from the very beginning. Yeah, she's got the most unfortunate bangs since Sam and the Womp, but I could relate to her more than any of the other characters in this movie. You look so happy. I can see the happy Chappie. That's your name. Dion and Yolandi enjoy watching Chappie learn, but the gang leader Ninja shows up and ruins the moment. Dion pleads with the gang to let him come back and keep teaching Chappie, but the real question is, why are they letting him leave in the first place? Just a few minutes earlier, they were threatening to kill Dion. Now that they've got a fully loaded Chappie, what do they need him for? They'd either keep him hostage to program and train Chappie, or just kill him outright, but they wouldn't just let him leave. Dion knows where their hideout is, and they have no leverage over him to keep him quiet. Why wouldn't he report these guys and get his robot back? Maybe Dion doesn't want the authorities involved because Chappie's stolen. True, but these guys don't know that. It makes no sense they'd let him walk away. Anyway, Chappie's left alone for a while to explore his new home. Just like a kid, he's curious and likes cartoons. But Ninja shows up to ruin the moment again. No, 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 my friend. You stay under this roof and make money for me. Chappie still can't understand English, so Ninja's bad attitude just scares him, and Yolandi comes to his defense. What are you doing? Teach him to shoot. You shouldn't be doing this with him yet. Dion said he has to be orientated first. <sighs> okay, let's talk about these two for a second. In real life, they're rappers in a hip hop band, De Antwerp. Ninja and Yolandi are their stage names. So are they supposed to be the same people? In the movie, they're gangsters running narcotics and they aren't in a band. But they wear band t-shirts and use their rapper names. Their music is featured heavily in the Chappie soundtrack. I hope you like their sound because you're gonna hear it a lot in this movie. Apparently Blomkamp, the director, was a fan of their music and decided to cast them as leads. But they built their brand around shock value, so it's no surprise that Ninja was a huge pain in the ass to work with. He told other actors how to act, harassed women on the set, and was actually written out of a few scenes because he was so difficult to work with. Blomkamp never wants to work with him again, and the movie didn't make much money, and that's why there's no chance of a Chappie sequel. I guess the moral of the story is, don't meet your heroes, guys. Or at least don't cast them as the leads in your heartfelt robot movie. Yolandi and the third gang member, America, teach Chappie a few basic words. That always is a clever little robot right there. Just being able to repeat a few words gets everyone excited. But then moments later, Chappie can suddenly construct whole new sentences. Who's here, mommy? I don't know. This isn't how language develops. Could the writing be any more inconsistent? Dion's come back to teach Chappie some more, but he's appalled with what he sees. Hey. What's up, f mother? Where, where, where did you learn that from? These guys? Hey, 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 hey. Please. If I could just have a moment with him. Excuse me? You know, surely you can go and count your narcotics in, a, in another room. Uh... Yeah, they've been threatening to kill Dion since they first met him. There's no way he's gonna give them lip like this and get away with it. Listen to me, I'm your maker. No counting narcotics, no robberies, no crimes. Jeffy, no crimes. Okay, and, and, and you've got to promise me. What's his promise? You can't break a promise, Chappie. But Dion never explained what a promise is. How can Chappie know not to break it? Seriously, at this stage in Chappie's language skills, he's probably thinking of something physical that he's literally not supposed to break. At least Dion wants to be a good parent to Chappie. He brought him things to help him learn. What's that? That's a book. It has stories, you see? Look. Chappie wants it? See, that's about a black sheep. Chappie's book? Yeah, it's yours. Chappie's got stories? Oh, wow. Chappie's got a book. Oh my gosh, could Chappie be any cuter? That looks like fun. I would love to help Chappie learn to read. You'd make a good robot big brother, Fozon. This is where the movie shines the brightest. Chappie is pure charisma, and I love seeing the world from his robot POV and watching him discover his creativity. It's Chappie in life. Lots of people will try to tell you what you can't do. And you know what? You must never listen. 
you want to paint, you can. Anything you want to do in your life, you can do. Chappie wants to paint. Don't let people take away your potential, Chappie. I'm not stopping in painting. Go paint, Chappie. But once again, Ninja ruins the moment by flipping out. He was just teaching him to paint. He was just teaching Chappie. You have to be a puss. What's up with these characters that are supposed to be tough and masculine, but they get all hysterical over nothing? Is pitching a fit like this supposed to be manly? Calm yourself, you fragile broflake. He's mine! I'll call the police on you, I swear, for, for mistreating him! Wait, what? This guy was about to blow your brains out one second ago, and now Dion's mouthing off again? Then tell him why to stole a f***ing police robot! You're a filthy person! You're a terrible shitty person! Eh, I'm writing about this in my feelings journal later! Why are they just letting him get away? Yeah, this really doesn't jibe with the scene later when they teach Chappie. We can't let motherfucker disrespect you, Holmes. He's already smarter than you'll ever be, you Philistine! Chappie, don't let this barbarian ruin your creativity. Not sure your creativity, Chappie. None of this makes sense. Ninja's ready to kill Dion for teaching Chappie to paint, but he just lets it slide when Dion disses him to his face? And he lets him go when he just said he's gonna call the cops? Just to keep up the momentum of decisions that make no sense, Ninja decides to dump Chappie in the middle of nowhere to teach him how tough the real world is. But why would he do that? Don't they need Chappie to pull off their heist? Yeah, exactly. Chappie's worth his weight in gold to these guys. It makes no sense to risk losing him. Even if this school of hard knocks approach is a good idea, they don't have time for it. Chappie's still got a lot to learn and only a few days to do it thanks to his damaged body. How will he even find his way back home? Chappie's smart. Chappie has a GPS. Wait, so Chappie knows what GPS is, but he doesn't know... What is the internet? It's a thing in a computer, Chappie. Then you look up you don't know. I want it. I want that internet. Connecting Chappie to the internet would be a much smarter way to teach him language and how the real world works, but Chappie's gangster guardians have other plans. Welcome to the real world, eh? I don't like this real world. Check him out, check him out. So Chappie wants to get in? Sorry, Chappie. Please? He's gonna go in the car. I want to go back in the car. Let him in. He's scared. You might want to cover your eyes, Photon. It gets pretty brutal. Uh, I hate this part. I'm a chappy. He's a pig. Why are you throwing me? Yeah, Why are you doing this? Please, Chappy doesn't like it. Chappy. The same expressive animation that makes Chappie look cute and curious now shows the full brunt of his agony, and it's really hard to watch. I guess this scene is supposed to represent a loss of innocence, but it's so over the top and makes no sense to the plot. After being abandoned, stoned, beaten, and lit on fire, Chappie takes solace with a new friend for a brief moment of rest. Meanwhile, a rival engineer at Tetraval is getting suspicious of Dion's experiments with robot consciousness. Hey, it's Hugh Jackman with a mullet! And his natural Aussie accent. You're making me as cross as a frog in a sock, mate. He's jealous of Dion because the AI police scouts are much more popular than his own robot project, the Moose, which is piloted remotely by a human controller. Joburg police love Dion's robot scouts because they're small and versatile. They can bust up a crime ring or deal with minor stuff like loitering. Whereas the Moose... Look at it, it's overkill. It's expensive, it's big, and it's ugly. It's gonna have to get a hell of a lot worse for us to even consider this. And Jackman's like, Oh, I get it. So I just need to cause a citywide riot to show my overkill project is necessary. But even if the moose helped in one crisis, it's still not the right robot for everyday use. Yep, it's pretty dumb. But to hatch his master plan, first he needs to hunt down Chappie. Uh, hasn't Chappie been through enough? Is that his hard drive? On the outside? <laughs> After all this violence and terror, Chappie escapes back to the hideout. Who did this? A man. He been ran. And there were children also. He needs a fire, even though I said please. Man, the voice acting for Chappie is top notch. I don't think I've ever felt so much empathy for a robot character in any other movie. Yolandi and America piece Chappie back together, and Chappie reaches out for some motherly comfort. This is my book from a maker. It's called Black Sheep and Little Bird. Please, may you read it? At least Yolandi's nice to him. Enough, she's even more loving to Chappie than his maker. 
Dion fixates on shaping Chappie as a project, but Yolandi seems more interested in letting Chappie be himself as a person. Hello, Mommy. Your black sheep Chappie is special. I know, Mommy. Hi, Chappie. And once again, Ninja shows up to ruin a sweet moment. What's that, Chappie? It's nothing. Show me. It's Mommy. Chappie, if you want to be in the gang, you have to be cool like Daddy. Put the thing down. Now. If you want to be cool, you have to act cool. I really don't like this guy. Yeah, he's pretty much the worst. Cue the pointless montage of dressing up Chappie like a gangster. So just to recap, teaching Chappie language, waste of time. Taking time to decorate Chappie with spray paint and junk jewelry, super critical. In spite of the abuse he's just put Chappie through, he declares himself to be Chappie's daddy. And from now on, I'm gonna be your daddy, for real. But when they try to get Chappie to steal some cars for them... I can't do lies. Lies is a crime. I, I promise my makeup. No, 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 not crimes. Special gangster. Special gangster. Yes, you want to come with, Chappie? Yeah, I want to come yeah. with. They trick Chappie into stealing cars by telling them they're ninja's cars. They just need Chappie to get them back. Don't steal other people's things! Later, at a crime boss's dogfighting ring, Chappie has his first encounter with death. It's dead, Chappie. Yeah. And for the first time, he learns that he's dying, too. That battery's stuck. I, I die, Chappie, die. Chappie agrees to do the heist in order to make money for a new body. When he sees Dion again, he's cold. I didn't make you so you could die, Chappie. I want to live. I want to stay here with Mommy. I don't want to die. I don't get it. Shouldn't Chappie be more angry at Ninja for abandoning him? I don't know what to tell you, big guy. This movie starts to make less and less sense. Hugh Jackman uploads a virus that shorts out all the police droids, including Chappie. Dion takes him back to his lab to make sure he's okay. Chappie sees a prototype he could use as a new body, but Dion's pessimistic. I can't save you, Chappie. But why? Because you are conscious. We don't know what consciousness is. So we cannot move it. Ch Chappie can feel it. I can know what it is, and then I can move me. You can't move it, I'm sorry. Uh, why not? Chappie's personality started out as pure data. Why can't he just make a backup of his personality right now and put it in a new body? Is that possible? Oh yeah, I make backups of you all the time just in case. Watch, I'll do it right now. Be gentle. Hello, I'm Photon. Hi, Photon. I'm Photon. Want to read a book about robots? Wow, what are the odds? I've got one just like it! Anyway, since that would be too easy, Chappie steals a neural helmet to try and make a backup of himself. I'm taking it! I'm taking it! But the helmet's made to scan human brain activity. It wouldn't work on a robot. Yep, he tries it out on Yolandi first. But that wouldn't work either. The helmet's designed to pilot the moose, not record every detail of a human personality. Don't be too logical, Photon. You're gonna fry your circuits before you make sense of this disaster. Speaking of disasters, the city's in a full-blown riot now that the police droids are disabled. Chappie gets caught on camera robbing an armored truck. To avoid further PR nightmare, Sigourney decides to sick the moose on Chappie. Do it. Destroy that robot. Thank you, ma'am. Burn it to ash. And Chappie realizes he's been played. I'm sorry, Chappie, I swear. I needed your help with the heist, Chappie. You lied to me. You lied to me, Daddy! Chappie, Chappie, you lied! Why no, Jeffrey! Stop, Jeffrey! The moose arrives to take care of business. It's a pretty cool looking big boy like Ed 209, or the tank from Ghost in the Shell. But its targeting system must have been calibrated by stormtroopers, because this thing can't hit things for crap at long range. Oh, come on! He was one of the only characters I liked! That's it, this movie has literally killed America. Chappie's disillusioned with humans, but still protects Yolandi. Dion is hit in crossfire. No! Maker! Maker! It's okay! You're gonna be okay, Maker! I've solved it! We're gonna get your consciousness out! All hope is lost, but then... I'm gonna draw this thing away from us. Okay. No. Take no. it, Chappie! No! Go, Chappie! No, Ninja! Go! Wait, what? Is the lead white guy gonna nobly sacrifice himself? What's wrong with that? He's being a hero. No, nothing's wrong, I'm just surprised. Usually in movies it's the minority characters that get killed, so the lead white guy can live. After Ninja's been such a tool this whole movie, it's kinda nice he can redeem himself by... 
No, oh, no, never mind. Of course. Not Yolandi! We liked her! All right, let's bring this sucker in for a landing. Chappie uploads Dion's consciousness to a test robot just before he dies. Chappie, I'm... I'm alive. I don't know what this means. It means you will live forever. Except, it's not really Dion, is it? It's just a copy who thinks he's Dion and shares his memories. Later, Ninja finds a backup of Yolandi's memories, and it looks like she's getting a new robot body, too. First of all, it's pretty annoying these guys get to run around in cool, indestructible bodies. Well, the girl has to get a fragile, pretty-looking body that looks like something out of a Bjork music video. Secondly, Yolandi is dead. Dead in the ground. This robot only has a copy of Yolandi's memories. The movie talks about souls going on to the next place, but Yolandi's soul is already there. If you're looking for a satisfying transhuman movie, I don't think this is it. It's far more likely that Chappie's personality could be transferred because he was pure data to begin with. Sure enough, he successfully uploads his consciousness to a deactivated police scout. Yay! But since all the scouts are controlled by Tetraval's network and equipped with GPS to trace them, there's no way he can just run away free and get away with it. Aww. The ending falls into the same fate as the rest of the movie, riddled with plot holes. Maybe the movie's more about ideas than plot. There's certainly plenty of interesting ideas that could have gone somewhere in this movie. The first 30 seconds of the movie's presented like a documentary about robot consciousness, but that's dropped and never brought up again. There could have been an interesting discussion on the ethics of artificial intelligence, especially in the context of an AI police force. Except, there's really no problem with the police scout's AI. They don't use excessive force, they protect human officers, and they do their job really well. The crime rate plummets as soon as they're in use. Regular civilians love them, only criminals don't. If anything, this movie could be making the argument that AI police would be more moral than humans, since all the main characters of this story are highly unethical. Jackman causes innocent people to die just so he can get more funding. We're supposed to have sympathy for these two when they've done nothing to deserve it. Dion's a hypocrite for telling Chappie not to commit crimes when he stole Chappie in the first place. They're all criminals. Even Chappie ends up corrupt and bloodthirsty under their influence. Maybe it's about nature versus nurture. Chappie starts off like an innocent child and grows up with terrible role models. But then what's the lesson here? Don't be a bad parent? Is that a lesson that needs to be taught? Hmm... Are we supposed to gain sympathy for criminals? No. Is consciousness defined in a new or thought-provoking way? No. Do we learn anything about creativity in the hands of AI? No. Is there a lesson about evil being necessary? No. All this time could have been spent developing interesting ideas, but it's wasted on a subplot about unlikable criminals trying to pull off one last heist. I think casting Ninja and Yolandi as the leads distracted from the more interesting elements of this movie. But if you're into Harley Quinn Joker kind of relationships, you might enjoy these two as a duo. In fact, DeAntward accused a director of Suicide Squad of jacking their style. But even with all its faults, this movie has a cult following of diehard fans, and I can honestly understand why. The graphics are gorgeous, the soundtrack is solid, and this movie did make me feel something. I could see people falling in love with this movie over the Chappie character alone. His animation and voice acting were flawless. Some people found Chappie annoying, but we thought he was extremely cute and lovable. If you like the looks of this character, I recommend you check this movie out for the robot alone. And if you're that into innocent childlike robots, you should subscribe to get more in your life. Whatever your take, Chappie is definitely a unique movie. The weird, colorful aesthetic, the South African dialects, the interesting casting choices. You might like it, you might hate it, but it is memorable. When you've watched as many movies as I have, sometimes bad and memorable is better than adequate and forgettable. You become so much more than I could ever have imagined. How was I supposed to know that you would become you? What did you think of this movie, folks, huh? Hmm. I still can't decide. What does everyone else think? Is this a good movie or a bad one? Hey, Photon! I've got an itch, but no hands! Can you help me out? Sure thing, buddy! Photon, no!